What's going on guys, John Santos and on this channel we help entrepreneurs build brands that impact the world from the ground up. In this video, we're going to be diving into ways for you to get your e-commerce store started on a budget. Whether you have 50 cents, $3 a month or whatever it may be, in this video we're going to be diving into ways to elevate your entire online operation. Joining me on this video is my man Ben Kang who is a web developer with years of experience in the e-commerce game as well as email marketing. He's going to be diving into some very special tricks and hacks to help you you guys elevate your online presence huge shout outs to the team over at hostinger for making this video possible they are helping entrepreneurs get started on a budget and in this video we're going to be showing you guys how they're accomplishing this so if you guys are a new visitor to this channel make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on those post notification bells to be alerted of future video drops and let's get this video started hey ben where you at man Oh shit, hey, dude, you just appeared out of nowhere. Oh yeah, I just came from the TV. <laughs> dude, I'm excited, let's, let's jump into this thing. Me too, I'm ready, I have my laptop and my iPad, let's, let's get this thing started. What's up FTGU fam, my name is Ben. I've been in the web development industry for about 10 years now. Um, I worked at different companies like the MGM Hotel, the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Currently, I have my own business and I really like to help small local businesses out here in Las Vegas reach their digital marketing goals, whether they're trying to start an e-commerce website, a portfolio website, or even just spice up their social media marketing. I'm really here to help provide my service and expertise so that way they can get to the point where they want to be. So with that being said, let's get started. The good news is that you don't need to break the bank in order to start an e-commerce website. If you're on a budget, that's okay, that's totally fine. You may have heard some stories where people spend anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000 and it really just depends on uh, several different things. If, if you have a lot of inventory that you're trying to sell, of course then it can you know, definitely raise up in the price. However, if you're just starting off and if you're on a budget, you can start slow and that's totally okay. Now to make up for you know, financial means that you currently don't have, you have to make it up with time and commitment. It doesn't matter if you don't know how to design or code. If you look at programming languages or if you look at coding and it confuses you, don't worry about it, you don't have to be a programmer or a developer or designer in order to make a successful website. But if you're watching this video, chances are you're an entrepreneur or you're very interested in starting your own business. And if that's the case, there's one thing that you have to be really good at and that's planning. There's no exception with good planning. And as the saying goes, if you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail, right? As long as you plan well, as to how you want to structure your website, how you want to portray your brand to your audience, that's really going to be the key component as to what makes your website great. And just like anything, all you have to do is, you know, do a little bit of research and you can definitely get there without breaking the bank. So step one, what I want to cover today is really about planning. If you're watching this video, chances are you already have maybe a brand, a physical store, and you know you want to do something where you sell things online. And just for the sake of this video, you have a sneaker store and you want to start selling stuff online, right? Very cool. If you can see my iPad over here, let's say for instance, this is your product over here. This is a shoe that you have. You can see from the logo and the colors that you're using, um, the blacks and the reds and whatnot, I would feel like this gravitates more towards like a younger audience and that's totally cool. If that's your target demographic, then you need to make sure that you know exactly what they're looking for, what type of colors and what type of trend and mood that they're aiming for, right? You want to make sure that you're also reflecting that on your website because at the end of the day, your website is just like any other channel. It's just like your TikTok channel, it's like your Facebook or your Instagram and it's another way for you to express what you want to show to your audience, right? And as you can see from over here, maybe there's some things that inspire you and something that gravitates others when they look at your product or your brand, right? So like for instance, we discussed the, like the colors, you know, what's some of the colors that you like? Maybe some of the reds, some of the off gray, the brown and whatnot, that's something that you can definitely incorporate onto your website. And that way when people are seeing your website, they have a good idea of exactly what you're trying to express, right? And it doesn't take a lot of money in order to do this, it just takes a lot of research, time and commitment. This is an example website that I want to show you. Um, it's not the best, but for those of you that don't know, this is Supreme's website. It's a skateboard apparel brand. This is a brand that I really like because I used to be a skateboarder back in the day too. And if you've ever visited this website, um, as you can see over here, it's a little rudimentary. It's a little dated, as you can see. It's definitely not gonna win any awards in terms of design or whatnot. But then if you're familiar with Supreme, they're all about the anti-culture movement. And you can see a lot of that in their designs. You know, like they have a lot of this, you know, design and stuff that's kind of off the script, but 
that's kind of their appeal because that's the way that they like to express themselves and their brand and I think it's kind of cool. At the same time, I think they did that purposely because it kind of fits into that anti-cultural movement as to like, hey, you know what? Screw you guys, we're gonna do our own thing. And at the end of the day, that's what you want to truly reflect on your website. It's just another way for you to really express your brand. Whether you're trying to sell an idea, a product or service, you need to make that message very clear for your audience, right? So that's an example that I want to show you guys. Herschel's website, as you can see, it's definitely night and day compared to Supreme. It's definitely incorporating more contemporary trends. It's way easier to navigate. And you can see from like some of the images that they have on the website that it's catered more for a younger audience. And if you see their products, that's definitely like the target market that they're shooting for. And I think it flows really well on their website and it just goes back to their branding. It really speaks to you know what they're trying to um, portray to their target market, right? So I'm trying to bring this to you guys because I want to express what you guys are trying to bring to your audience you know there's a couple things that I want to point out like you know what's some of the, the tone that you're going for with your website right are you going for something that's moody something that's vibrant do you want to go for like a warmer you know tone approach whatever the case may be you want to have a list of all of the things that you want your website to represent it doesn't take a lot of money to do that it really just takes your time your commitment and your passion in order to express that on your website after you have you know several images and um, several ideas as to what direction that you want to take this website. There's something that we do called wireframing and this is a very important process because before you look at any theme or any layout out there, maybe even before you look at any type of final product as to what your website's going to be, you want to first translate all the ideas that you have into a drawing. Even though you're not an artist, you know, that's okay. Just sketch something out. You want to maybe borrow some elements that you like from Nike's website or maybe from Adidas' website. You like the, you know, the header element that they have and maybe you really like the way that the slider functions. It doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe take, you know, a day or two to really just kind of consolidate everything that's going through your head because you want to make sure that you have all of your message on, you know, this piece of paper so that way when you're trying to translate it into reality, you get as closely as you can to that point, you know, without compromising more time or, you know, trying to hire a professional because at the end of the day, it doesn't take a lot to get to that point. It just takes a lot of planning. This part's very important. Important. So like I said, maybe just take a day or two to really write down everything that you like from your brand and also from different websites that you see out there. Step two, now you need to choose a tool that you're going to utilize to actually make your website. Now it's time to be you know, honest with yourself and you know, tell yourself, hey, do I want to learn how to code? Do I want to learn how to design? And really based on your comfort level, it's going to help you choose the right tool for you for the job, right? Let's say for instance, you don't like coding at all. You, you're not interested in it. Whenever you see coding language, Languages, you know, just kind of scares you away. That's totally fine. You don't have to be technical at all to start your own e-commerce website. There's plenty of good tools that you can use out there. And the first thing that I'm going to recommend, if you're more of a visual person, I recommend Squarespace because it's very easy to pick up. They have a e-commerce package that you can purchase and it's about $20 a month. So if your budget's, let's say a hundred bucks a month, right? All you have is a hundred dollars every month to invest into your website. That's more than enough. All of these tiers are going to be whether you use Shopify, WordPress, or Squarespace, it's gonna be about $30 or less, right? So that's really good. You have plenty of money that you can invest into something else. Going back to Squarespace is really good because they have something called a WYSIWYG builder, and that stands for what you see is what you get. It's a, a drag and drop type of builder. There's very little coding involved. I like it, I use it in the past, and you know, that's something that I recommend. Secondly, um, I really like to use WordPress. If you're open to, you know, a little bit of coding, WordPress out of the box doesn't come with any type of e-commerce solution, but you can definitely incorporate it by using something called plugin. And this is why WordPress is so powerful and still used to this day is because the plugin ecosystem for WordPress is so robust. You can do everything under the sun, whether you're doing e-commerce or you're doing something like a booking reservation, you know, type of system that you want to incorporate on your website, everything is available. And there's a lot of, you know, affordable options as well. So the thing about WordPress is that you do have to incorporate it with WooCommerce in order to enable the e-commerce functionality but thanks to a solution like Hostinger you can use that it's very affordable they have plans where it's like $1.99 a month if you pay for their annual plan but if you want to go month by month just to try it out, then they have, you know, different tiers like $9.99, $15.99, and usually even the cheapest option should be more than enough for you to get started. And I'm gonna show you real quick exactly how easy it is to get started with Hostinger. So Hostinger, 
has some very good affordable plans. So as you can see over here, it starts as low as $1.39 a month. I mean, can't get any cheaper than that. Of course, if you want something more robust, it goes higher in price. And there's also WordPress hosting plans available. So if you know for sure that you're only gonna be strictly hosting WordPress related content and websites, then this is a, a very good option for you as well. And look at that. This also starts at $1.99 a month. This is an account that I have. And as you can see over here, once you're logged in, you can choose different type of hosting plans. There's shared web hosting. This is primarily what you wanna start off with. You don't need to do cloud hosting or VPS hosting. That gets a little technical. And you know, just to start off, you probably don't need that anytime soon. You know, If you want to consolidate all the different type of assets that you have, like your domains, your professional emails, that just adds a different level of professionalism. And of course, it's not that expensive at all there's plenty of resources out there that you can look up in order to um, set that up yourself but let me just demonstrate to you how easy it is so you just pick a plan over here and you know based on what you want it's a little bit more pricey if you pay one month so if you're comfortable with hosting or i do recommend you know maybe committing to it for a longer time so that way you have a bigger discount last but not least can't talk about e-commerce without mentioning shopify personally i like shopify a lot because it's like wordpress plugin ecosystem on steroids and it's only strictly meant for e-commerce you don't even really need to do a lot of coding either you can definitely get started with you know little to no knowledge about coding and design however i do truly feel like if you want to utilize what shopify has to offer you have to you know at some point in the future get comfortable with some of the technology and features that it offers because it truly is very robust and the only way to really take advantage of that is to actually incorporate that and take the time to learn it yourself i highly recommend checking out shopify check out squarespace WordPress, other solutions out there that's very good as well, like Webflow, Wix, and whatnot, and just really find what is good for you. So step three, now you can go to the next step and actually pick out a theme. So because in this video, we're using WordPress as an example, we're gonna be looking at some WordPress themes. There's a website over here called themeforest.net. This is really good, has a lot of resources, not only for WordPress, but I would say that it has the biggest collection of WordPress themes and templates. So definitely check out some of the content that they have over here. I'm on their website right now and I'm just gonna type for something like maybe sneakers, right? So I type it in and I see a bunch of results and there's a lot of different things that you know you can pick out and just really take the time to kind of go through everything and see you know what might fit the best for you. And I wouldn't necessarily say go for the most you know best selling theme because just because something you know is best selling doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to translate well for you know, your business because at the end of the day, you know your target audience, your target market better than anyone else. So you should try to find something that's kind of has a, a fine balance, right? Something that is you know, highly regarded, is well rated, doesn't have a lot of bugs, but at the same time, you can kind of envision your own website on this layout because at the end of the day, you wanna customize it and tailor it so that way it fits your needs. Don't just look at one and you know, go with that. I would recommend that you take you know, the time to look at several different examples, see what else that they have to offer, so that way you can really come to a conclusion once you have maybe three or four different you know, good examples even though you might not be you know very versed in design or whatnot you can really let your creative side take place and so just try to envision exactly what you're trying to represent on your website for your audience okay so once you have that and you're happy with a theme and template you want to make sure you also do some research uh, in terms of what the developer provides right theme force is very convenient because you can see exactly who made it what company made it and you can see some of the feedback and some of the responses that they have to their previous customers down the line you are bound to run into some issues right maybe something is broken something needs to be updated and you're kind of stuck if hostinger can't help you directly because your issue is related directly with your theme then your best chance is to contact the developers themselves because they will give you a solution most likely as to what you're facing test it for yourself make sure it looks good on your iphone make sure it looks good on a tablet device before you actually spend money and purchase a theme because these are quite affordable they range anywhere from 20 to 60 I would say about $80 is in the higher range, but just because you spend more money doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be a better theme. It just really comes down to exactly what you're looking for. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up your WooCommerce website with Hostinger. So you wanna to go to Hostinger's main homepage. And once you're there, then you are gonna see several different options to pick your hosting plan. You wanna click on WordPress Web Hosting 
and that's going to give you several different options, right? You can choose from the 199 all the way up to the 1159, and I do ask you to take the time to look and compare what the differences are. So just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with the one month plan, which is 799, and I'm gonna go ahead and create an account, enter in my email address, and select my payment of choice, and make sure you enter in coupon code John for some additional savings. This is a limited time uh, coupon code, so I do recommend that you try to utilize this as soon as possible. After you've made your choices, go ahead and submit secure payment and you should be good to go. So we have our website working and WooCommerce is set up. So WordPress out the gate is pretty customizable depending on the theme that you purchase, then it should be pretty straightforward on what you can do. One thing that I do recommend is using something like Elementor. It's um, completely free and it allows you to really customize your web page without writing any type of code at all. Once you do that, you're happy with the theme, you know, you have your brand, okay, and you pick the tool that you want to use, right? Last but not least, you really have to test and test, test, test. I have that on my tablet right over here three times because I feel like this step is really overlooked because people get excited. They're like, okay, my theme looks really good, but just because something is aesthetically pleasing doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to translate into sales and conversions. And at the end of the day, you're starting an e-commerce website because you want to get the ball rolling with your goals, you know, with your business goals, right? And that means you have to sell products or services or whatever the case may be. And in order to do that, you have to make sure that your website is performant. And what I mean by that is, is it loading, you know, in a relatively short amount of time? Are things you know, working correctly? There's no broken links and all that. And it doesn't take a genius or a coding guru to do all that. You can definitely take the time to do that yourself. Navigate through your website from start to finish. I'm talking about from your homepage all the way to the confirmation page where it says thank you for purchasing X, Y, and Z. You wanna make sure everything is loaded quickly. There's no bad experience. We call this friction points. Whenever you face something where there's friction, because something is not working, something is loading too slowly, you wanna identify that and try to troubleshoot that as quickly as possible. And this is why it's very important to use a hosting platform like Hostinger because you can consult with them. Or if you purchase your theme, then you can consult the developers directly. So you have two different sources that you can reach out to if you need some assistance before you seek professional help. And of course, this is what it's all about because we're trying to run an e-commerce website on a budget. So try to do all of this beforehand. Being proactive is really going to help you in the long run, right? So there's several tools that we can utilize in order to see exactly how performant our website is, right? The first thing that I want to go over is this tool called Page Speed Insights, and this is offered by Google. It's totally free. Once your website is alive, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's live to the public, but it's accessible from a domain. You want to copy and paste your URL. You want to paste that in here, okay, in this section and hit analyze. And it's going to do its thing and then give it a couple seconds and then it's going to give you a score. And that score is going to tell you exactly how quickly your content loads. So over here, we can see from Palace's um, website, I use that as an example. You can see that they got a 91 out of 100 that's pretty good you know that's an A right and what's really cool about this is that if you scroll down you can see exactly why I got that score you know there's some other things that you can take a look at as to why it didn't get the full 100% some of this might sound like Greek to you and that's okay if you don't understand everything that's totally fine but so those are a few things that you can do right away to improve the performance on your website secondly that I wanted to cover is if you're using Google Chrome there's something that you can use from over here and all you need to do is right click and then hit on inspect and what that's going to do is it's going to load this dashboard so if you click on over here this tab where it says lighthouse then this is google's um software where it basically crawls the content of your website and it's going to give you a score right so give it a couple of seconds once again and very similar to the first example this can give you several metrics this time more than one it's going to divide it into seo performance best practices and so on but it's a lot of good content and it's going to give you some quick quick tips as to how to improve your website. So if you're comfortable making these, by all means go for it because sooner or later, you're gonna have to cross that bridge. Even if you're not 100% comfortable adjusting your website right now, that's okay. But then, you know, you should be 
open to the fact that maybe one day you or someone else has to step in and try to make these corrections because I can't stress enough how maybe impatient is the word that most people are on the internet. If things don't load within four or five seconds, then it doesn't matter how unique your content is, your product or service, even though you feel like it's the best thing out there and it's presented, it's designed you know, really good. If people can't see what they're, you know, came looking for on your website within that short amount of time, they're bound to leave and go find, you know, something else because they just don't want to wait. No matter how, you know, nicely put together your website is, always think about testing and make sure you know exactly how quickly or slowly your website is loading because you want to try to address that before you actually open the curtains and present your website to the outside world. Bro, <laughs> these tools that you showed us today, man, have been, honestly, I know they're going to be a blessing to everybody that's watching, especially because the people that are watching this are wanting to start something on a budget. Absolutely. But instead of just going somewhere and like getting a bunch of random stuff and seeing all these ugly websites out there, mm -hmm. you just laid the foundation to beautiful websites out on the internet. Absolutely. So where can people find you and contact do you have to want to get a hold of you? Yeah, if you guys want to find me, you can find me on Instagram. It's I am Ben Kang. Also, you can just visit my website. That's studiocanvas.com. That's canvas with a K. K like my last name, Kang, okay? K-A-N-B-S. Uh, okay. Don't forget that, okay? Honestly, guys, this information that he shared, make sure you guys revisit it as you guys are starting to build out your websites because the processes yes, that he laid out very simply and cleanly on this nice iPad with this nice presentation and the tools that he just showed you are going to help take your website and your entire business to new levels. So once again, we appreciate Hostinger for sponsoring this video and allowing us to showcase this information in a very creative way. If you guys are on a budget and looking to start a WooCommerce WordPress integration, make sure you guys check out the links right down below and use the coupon code John to get 91% off your full year plan. So basically it's almost free. And with that coupon code, you're able to get started. I think one of the best things about Hostinger is honestly the very easy way to get started. Like, like we were mentioning in this part of the video, it was super simple and intuitive to just start launching. The fact that they got live support available for you guys to just give somebody a call or chat in the chat box in order to get your questions answered is amazing. And I think the best part about it is a 30 day money back guarantee. So you guys have nothing to lose, give it a shot and let us know what you guys think. And once again, we appreciate all of you guys for watching this. Make sure you check out the next videos that are gonna be launching on our site. And this is gonna be the first of many that we'll have Ben on. So leave a comment right down below with something that you guys would want to get answered e-commerce wise or website development or any apps. And he does all kinds of stuff. This guy is a magician. So, <laughs> so make sure you subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one.